Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Elsie Yang from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm very happy to be here and to share some observations from Asia and from my perspective. So uh, I'm the co-founder of BShare and Alphalytics. So if you want to follow me on Twitter or uh, you, my YouTube channel or my Telegram, now is your timing. And so before my sharing, I have a one question I want to ask you guys. Do you know how many Web3 numbers users around the world? Oh, sorry. A is 30 million, millions. B, 420 million. C, 50 million. And D, 587 million. And the answer is B, I just showing you. But the second question is more difficult. So which region has the higher number of Web3 users? A, Europe. B, North America. C, Asia. D, South America. What do you think the answer? C, yes. <laughs> the C is Asia. So we can see here, with over 420 million crypto users, Asia has the most, 20 and 60 million, 260 million. And the mainly is from China, India, and Vietnam. And we can also see the adoption rate about cryptocurrencies around the world. And the emerging market like Southeast Asia is the highest. But we can see like in here, it's now, and it's the pre-bull market. So even now, the bear market, the adoption rate is still higher than before. And why we are talking about adoption rate? Because we can see here, the Vietnam and the Philippines are the top one and top two adoption rates around the world. And the adoption rate is made by chain analysis. And they just like do some research and survey around 146 countries and to get this answer. And so why the Southeast Asia is the highest adoption rate? And the first thing is they have so many people. And the second thing is like the play to earn model is works in Southeast Asia. So we are talking about each country step by step. And the first one I want to talk in is about Vietnam. I don't know if you guys have been to Vietnam. Vietnam is very crowded. They have so many people. And the most important thing is in Vietnam, there are 20 million Vietnamese have the cryptocurrencies. And 17% are young people. And they really like GameFi. So this is the reason why Stepan or Axie Infinity is so popular in Vietnam. But other than the GameFi, the Vietnam, because they have so many people working overseas, so they have a very big amount to do like transfer money back to their hometown. So Vietnam, they have around like three to 3.5 billion every year they need to remit to their hometown. So they are choosing cryptocurrencies as a way to transfer because it's easier and cheaper. And second thing is Axie Infinity, the most popular game fight around the world is from Ho Chi Minh City. And other than Axie Infinity, there are still some very popular project like Kyber Network and Coin198. So this is Vietnam. And the regulation in Vietnam, right now, the cryptocurrency is not legal. But uh, last year, last May, their government has announced like they are becoming regulation Vietnam, the cryptocurrencies in Vietnam. Oh, so second country we are talking about is Philippines. Philippines is very beautiful for there are so many small islands and they have more people than Vietnam. And their annual income is a little bit higher than Vietnam. But the same as Vietnam, they have so many people working overseas. So they need a cheaper and faster and secure way to do remittance market. And Vietnamese, they also really like GameFi. And the most like famous GameFi guild, YGG, is from Philippines. And another famous project is HelloDAO. HelloDAO is about the next generation payments in Philippines. And they aim to lower the bar barriers for crypto by providing a liquidity for the local stable coins. Yeah, so the future of the cryptocurrencies in Philippines is like their central bank, BSP, they just announced a coins. So the central bank announced coins is totally different from like me announce a stable coins. It's different. So I think Philippines, their bank and their government is still is start to regulate and to promote cryptocurrencies. 
And after the Philippines, we have to talking about the biggest market in Asia is China. China have crazy people. 1.4 billion users. But as everybody knows, governments ban the cryptocurrencies for mining and trading. But they are still have a lot of crypto users and developers. So what are they doing? They move to Singapore or Hong Kong. So this is the reason why Singapore and Hong Kong is, have so many famous projects. But in China, if you want to do cryptocurrency, you still can do, and you still have some project can do. But you can see the relationship between this kind of project is they have a very good relationship with governments. So if you want to do the cryptocurrencies or Web3 or blockchain in China, you need to build connection with the government. And NEO is the Chinese Ethereum, and VeChain is their layer one blockchain, and Huobi is the popular exchange right now. Yeah, and speaking of China, because they are banned cryptocurrencies, so they need a door or a gateway to the Chinese market. So Hong Kong is your choice. And you can see the Coinbase CEO Armstrong, he just saying like, in the future, crypto is open to everyone in the world. EU, UK, and now Hong Kong. He thinks America, they just be more conservative and more regulations. So Hong Kong is a good spot for us. And another thing is important is this June, like four days ago, Hong Kong just kicked off a new rules about virtual ASA trading platform operators. And the Huobi CEO, Justin Sun, he just published like, oh, Huobi will got the license ASAP. So Hong Kong right now is just like a digital asset world sandbox for China. So if you wanna do marketing to Chinese, I think Hong Kong is your best choices. And another thing is Hong Kong, they just like so many VC from China or from Hong Kong, from traditional finance, they are trying to do uh, cryptocurrencies right now. And there are so many government grants. So if we wanna do some marketing in China, yeah, Asia, I think Hong Kong is the best choice for now because they are be more open than before and they have so many money. And there are some very famous projects. And in, like Animoca Brands is a very famous metaverse and gamify investors. Yes, and talking to Hong Kong, we have to speaking of Taiwan, it's next to Hong Kong, and have some political issues with China. And in Taiwan, because uh, we have the top three FTX users, so we are a big victims of, of FTX. So right now, the government is being more conservative and they have more regulations right now. And Taiwan's famous project, of course, is my project, just kidding. And famous project right now, maybe Saibavo is for security, and Perpetual Protocol is for DEX liquidity tools. Yes. And after Taiwan, we, well, I want to talk about Korea. And Korea not only famous for kimchi and Blackpink, they're also famous for Luna and UST Doquan, right? But if you're thinking about the government, maybe after the Luna, maybe they will be more conservative, but it's totally wrong, because Korea government, they just announced a digital new deal. They say they want to be the top five largest metaverse adopted country. So they invested a lot. They say they will invest like 186 million US dollars just to invest in metaverse. So they will use all their resources to building a metaverse kingdom in Asia, in Korea. And they say they will cultivate more than 40,000 experts in the metaverse. So if you wanna do some metaverse, maybe you can check Korea, because they have so many resources and the government support it. And there are some very famous projects like CryptoQuant, NFT Go, and it's all about data projects in Korea. And so the future of cryptocurrencies regulation in Korea, I think if you want to do metaverse, it's very nice for you. And another thing, like they just passed the Virtual Asset User Protection Act. And the next stage, they will promote the insurance and disclosure of virtual assets. So I think it's very important and it's very positive for cryptocurrencies company and users in Korea. And after Korea, we have to think, think about Singapore. Singapore, they are the most open and more freedom for the financial, for the fintech. And they are also the fourth most crypto-ready hub in the world. 
And you want to know the first one is London, second one is Dubai, and third one New York, and the fourth one is Singapore. It's like a very important hub in Asia. But Singapore, they are more conservative now because FTX, like a big attack on Singapore government. So, uh, but Singapore still have so many famous projects like Nansen, the on-chain data tools, or Newman, or Apollo. So the future of cryptocurrency regulation in Singapore, uh, the first thing is like the banks, if you wanna do cryptocurrency, you need collateral like 1.25 equals one US dollars. And second thing, they just announced a new policy last January before FTX. They are be more conservative. The cryptocurrency services, you cannot do advertisement in public areas. But consider of the Singapore's background still be a very open and freedom country for Asia markets. But it's not as positive as before. So maybe this is a timing for Hong Kong to do more. And the last country I want to share is about Japan. Uh, Japan, you, we have to know, like uh, 2014, they are the biggest Bitcoin and trading volume around the world. But they have two like hacker like attack their exchange. So the government in Japan they be more conservative and they have so many regulations. But this is also the reason why they can survive from the FTX. So right now Japanese government is changing. They are different because Japan is famous for their IP, their animates. So the government is support their NFT and Web3 games to utilize their IP. So right now, because also they have a very strict regulations, so this can minimize the downside and the risk. So maybe if you wanna collab with IP and you wanna do some NFT project, Japan is a good choice for you guys. And the famous project in Japan, maybe like Crypto Ninja or Azuki, some NFT project is very famous there. Yeah. So summary, if you want to do GameFi and you want to hire more, you want to have more and more users, you have move to earn, play to earn, blah, blah, blah to earn, you can go to Southeast Asia to do marketing. But if you want to say that uh, Asia headquarter, I think Singapore or Hong Kong, but depends. If you want to do marketing with, if you want to marketing Chinese, you can do Hong Kong. But if you want to do Southeast Asia, I think Singapore is better. And if you want to do Metaverse, Korea is a good choice. And if you want to do NFT and you want to collaborate with some IP, you can go to Japan. And if you want to do hiring, because Taiwan has so many high quality uh, engineers and marketers, so you can do Taiwan. Yes, and this is my sharing and observations. Thank you, Do. <laughs> We have five minutes for the questions, if you have really fast ones. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your presentation. So if I may ask, are you familiar with Astar Network, which is like a really big Jap Japanese-based blockchain right now? So are you familiar with Astar? Yeah, yeah, you do. So, and what, what do you think about it? Because they are doing like a lot of, you know, NFT cooperations, even with government. They did a hackathon with Toyota recently. They are doing some NFT collections with uh, like biggest rail railway operator in in Japan. Mm -hmm. So they are actually doing a lot of stuff. So, so I was thinking if you if you know the project actually or or not really. So, sorry, can you can you brief your question again? I'm not. Uh, so, if you are familiar with the A Star project, A Star, a -Star network, yeah. A Star, what is A Star? Uh, it's like a smart smart contract platform. Uh -huh. It's like a, it's being said it's like the biggest Japanese project right uh -huh, now. So, uh -huh, so, uh -huh. so, so, so I was wondering if you uh -huh. know it. Uh huh. Oh, sorry, I'm not very familiar with that part. Oh, uh, yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But I joined the Tokyo Crypto Week. On March, but um, I think the vibe is very different from the European and the States. Because when I went to the States, like Denver or um, other crypto projects, I can see so many crypto investors 
And but when I went in Tokyo, just join the Ethereum week, all I see is smart contract uh, engineers. There is not a lot of uh, investors. But Japan, so many like Animoca or some GameFi, they just doing like acquiring IP layer and they do marketing in Southeast Asia. Yeah. Still being a lost mom. <laughs> so, do you think um, Japan could use um, stablecoin instead of yen? Use what? Stablecoin instead I of yen, but oh. every day. I, 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 um, I think Japan, they use a lot of Bitcoin, but stablecoin, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh. Hmm. And if you have further questions, and you can ask me in my Telegram or Twitter. Maybe I'm not very sure, but I can do some research and I can ask some people and I can answer you guys. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you, you very much.